Hello and welcome to another major market movements end of the week market review for September 4th, 2015. I'm Kwa G and in this video we're covering the PM complex starting off here with gold and it's the gold daily chart. Uh, <clears throat> we are seeing a pretty firm rejection down from this trend line and so far it looks like we've got uh, working on three waves down. Um, I got some uh, Elliott Wave ideas suggesting that this leg down could be a C wave of a corrective pattern to the downside, which may not be finished just yet. And then at the end of that C wave, we may get one more push higher. We'll go deeper into that in just a moment. The um, QG3 is uh, still in a neutral pattern uh, at today's close, but uh, by Next week on uh, Tuesday, we should see this um, this alignment clearly um, in a bearish alignment to the downside, unless something radical a radical change happens and we come back up and close back above the uh, 20 DMA. I don't suspect that to be the case, but um, if it did, that could um, disrupt the uh, uh, bearish alignment to the downside. The Bollinger Bands are coming back in to pinch a bit, uh, building up some energy. Uh, could, I think it could uh, last a few more days, bring these in a little bit tighter before we see an impulsive breakout. Uh, either to the upside or downside, I suspect it could be to the downside. Um, gold on the weekly, we closed lower than last week's close, uh, but not yet below, not quite below last week's intraweek low there at uh, 17, uh, 117.63. If we get, um, if we had closed this week below that level, that would have been uh, a bit more bearish, but uh, as it is, is bearish is just not uh, incredibly so. And the EWO, Nothing to show you there. RSI, we came up and broke the 60 level and we we're pulling back in to the uh, 40, 60 range. And I suspect we could see the RSI come down a bit more to test that 40 range, maybe next week. And then we have another chance at a bounce up to the upside. Gold on the Weekly MACD is open to the downside still, though contracted some. And on the daily, we're uh, just looks like we ticked over today to the downside, so that's bearish. So overall picture for gold is still looking bearish. Uh, the downside may be limited somewhat, and we'll again go into that in just a moment. Let's take a look at silver. All right, so silver uh, has this choppy move to the upside. Um, today's close is an inside double key reversal, which does set a key point of resistance at the top of this candle here at the high of 1497, which also I'm not sure if that qualifies as a um, uh, inverted hammer candle, but it's very close. Anyway, that sets that key top. So while we're below that top, we're um, potentially still bearish, but um, we're also range bound in between this um, expanding wedge pattern here with the top rail and this bottom rail where we spent a lot of time chopping back and forth inside this expanding wedge here and um, or megaphone pattern. Um, it's kind of an oddball pattern. Um, could we get another bounce off of it? Possibly. Um, just a very neutral, uh, odd uh, placement for this pattern right here. If this had, if this expanding pattern had been at the top of an uptrend, I would have suggest I would be looking at this as very bearish. Um, but since it's right in the middle of this, this already uh, this range bound action here. It makes me think that uh, we could chop around in it a bit more, possibly. 
Um, it's really going to depend on this bottom rail, whether we're going to get a bounce off of it next week or not. If it fails to the downside, clearly with a day to close below it, then um, it's going to be an indication of some fall through to the downside and uh, continued bearishness. The QG3 is still in a bearish alignment to the downside. The 20 DMA did pose, continues to pose as resistance, as you can see, with yesterday's intraday high being capped right there at the 20 DMA. Silver on the weekly. We uh, just get a uh, basically a long-legged doji here uh, in the middle of last week's um, uh, rather large candle. So really not uh, giving us a clear indication. It's a very neutral candle for the weekly. And the EWO, Helgen right next to the zero line, really you know very neutral. Um, RSI is still in the uh, 40, 60 range, so we're still neutral as well. Uh, MACD on the weekly is open to the downside, that's bearish, and on the daily, we're open to the downside as well, still bearish. So I'd say silver is somewhere between neutral and bearish with the, uh, the patterns that I'm seeing here. Take a look at platinum. So platinum on the daily, it's, um, hold on here. This trend line here is a key level of support and we're still above that by just a bit, um, but very choppy action, nothing very clear as far as direction is concerned. The MAC, or the, excuse me, the um, QG3, was in a bullish alignment, but today we come down and we close so that uh, well below the 20 DMA um, and the 3 EMA closes very close to the 20, um, very neutral uh, tight pattern right there. So uh, neutral and platinum on the weekly. Uh, last week's hammer candle um, is still maintained, uh, though we didn't get any fall through to the upside. So we just get an inside negative week. Yeah, which is neutral. EWO, nothing to see there. RSI, we are still inside the 4060 range. That's neutral. MACD on the daily is open to the downside, just barely, um, with a shrinking histogram. So the upside is waning. And platinum closes uh, neutral with the signal line right there at the baseline. So overall pattern for platinum is looking uh, very neutral here, uh, not bearish or bullish. All right, let's take a look at the LA wave charts. All right, so here's gold. Here's one can one particular count that I'm entertaining. There are certainly some other counts. Um, but this is the one that um, seems the most probable to me, uh, based upon this uh, this past history here of this very choppy uh, sideways downward uh, movement, um, suggests that we've got a A wave down far from way back here. Let me get off of, get on auto here. Um, we got an A way down here from X that that big plunge that took place in 2013. And then so far since then, uh, it's been a very slow, choppy descent with um, what looks like an ABC pattern with a 335 contracted flat for B. And now we're working on wave C to the downside. Wave C of Y of 2. Um, and it's very long, drawn out, uh, possibly ending diagonal type correction or a uh, final fifth, I should say, with... Um, an ABC down for wave one, wave two sharp, ABC down for three, and now we're working on a very long, drawn out wave four flat. The, you know, this is just one count of many, but um, uh, this particular count would, would suggest that we've got several more months of sideways chop while we're below this orange trend line, which is currently above uh, at the end of this week at roughly. 
at about 1248. If we were to see an impulse up here that took out uh, 1231, 1232, came up and tested that trend line uh, sometime before the end of the year, that would be particularly bullish and could potentially um, break out to the upside with a rule of four breakout since that line's been tested once, twice, three times. So a fourth time does entertain the possibility of a rule of four breakout. Will we see it? Uh, I'm not sure. I think right now we'll pull it in tighter. Um, and I think what we got going on here is we've got uh, wave A, B, and C finished working on a possible X wave, which could be finished with an A, B, C to the downside. Since we did get a slight incremental low below A, uh, that does count for uh, a slight zigzag pattern to the downside. And so I see one of two um, outcomes from this. We either get a small bounce next week that stays trapped underneath this orange trend line and then returns uh, further south uh, to make the X wave, um, drive the X wave a bit deeper. Um, the other possibility is if we break the orange trend line, we could get a, another impulse up for a second zigzag to the upside. So we got one zigzag here, A, B, C, and then we get an X wave down, and then we could get a double zigzag with a second zig wave, zigzag up, maybe to test 1180 or even 1200, somewhere in there, before another rejection to the downside. Here's silver. Um, here's the larger pattern that I'm seeing. Uh, actually, that's not the one, I don't think. Yeah, okay, here it is. So, uh, it looks to me as though we've got three, four sharp, and then we're working on this um, five-wave pattern to the downsides, an ending diagonal uh, with a wave one, wave two, wave three, wave four flat, since I'm um, expecting an alternation with the uh, wave two sharp, which is clearly sharp. And then after wave four flat is done, then we get one more wave down into five of five of C of two for a potential major bottom. Um, a major bottom doesn't necessarily mean that the silver is just going to uh, go crazy to the upside. We could get a bounce up, break that blue trend line, and then come right back down, um, maybe create um, some kind of inverted head and shoulders pattern before breaking out uh, later in 2016. Uh, you know, saw with a solid um, run of multiple weeks to the upside. Okay, so if we go back here, this is wave A, wave B. I think we're still working on wave C here. And uh, okay, here we go. So here's four flat. Um, th this is a very oddball structure, though. This is expanding um, uh, wedge, if you want to call it. It um, it's just in an odd place, and uh, I'm not sure if this is a consolidation pattern before we break higher, or if this is topping a action and we break lower. This is just very choppy, very neutral, really hard to read which uh, way this market w wants to go um, while we're trapped to between these two extremes, these two pink lines here. So uh, we'll see what the market gives us next week. Um, I would say a break below uh, 1443 is going to entertain the idea that uh, uh, we're going to break this pattern to the downside. Um, and we could, could come down here to 1420, maybe even deeper upon that break. All right, let's take a look at GDX. Here's the long-term count wave. Uh, I suspect we're in wave, um, we've got wave three down, wave four, which was sharp. And uh, we've got uh, sub one, sub two, sub three. There is a slight possibility we have a wave four is finished, though it is a sharp move to the upside. So we don't have any alternation. So I, I lean towards alternation in my LA wave counts. And so I suspect we've got a wave A up, wave B down could be finished, and now we're, I'm expecting a wave C up uh, to produce that 
a flat correction. And it does have the possibility of coming up here and challenge, challenging that um, blue trend line again up here at around um, you know the upper 17 level. And then we could there is a chance we could um, break south one more time into a final fifth of, of two, and that could set a major bottom and a major reversal to the upside after that's complete. Um, we this purple trend line did see a see a breakdown, but no real back test. So this leg to the upside would do that job of back testing that. Um, and once that's complete, we may get one more move to the downside. That's my current expectation. The QG3 currently is in a bearish alignment to the downside. So you can see here with today's action, we do get a hammer candle uh, at the end of the day. So that does suggest that that can't hammer candle does suggest we may get another pop up here to challenge the 20 DMA, at least up to 1434, um, maybe even a breakout and come up here to test the uh, um, upper Bollinger Band sometime next week. GDXJ also in the same boat. We are as far as the QG3 is concerned, we are in a bearish limit to the downside. Um, though with today's action, with this uh, outside key reversal, um, that's a bullish candle. So that could ignite some fall through to the upside, at least back up to the 20, maybe even break it and come up here to the upper Bollinger Band sometime next week. All right, here's the weekly time scale for GDXJ. And you can see the weekly hammer candles have done a fine job of supporting um, the salt one all the way back here in July set a key low and the market's been able to keep above that since and we set another one last week another hammer candle and uh, this week we just get an inside um, negative week so uh, not the fall through that I would have preferred to the upside but it still is a neutral candle and we still maintain uh, a presence above that key low there at 1823. So as long as we do that, I would have to lean towards the bullish possibilities there. Here's GDX, the micro count, wave uh, three, four, um, again, four, probably not done. And we're working on a wave one, a wave two of C of four. So I expect five waves up. So one, two, uh, maybe come up here for three to give a challenge this top, pull back into four, and then one more wave up into five of C of four. And then from there, we could see another rejection to the downside. Here's a, there was a GDX count. Here's a uh, GDXJ count. We got the standalone five wave move to the upside and it looks very clear to me this pretty clear straightforward five wave move to the upside wave one wave two three four and five for a, a wave one now wave ones um you know after you've come down off a large uh move to the downside um an initial impulse is what i call to the upside is what i call a standalone impulse and the reason i call it that is because a standalone um, really desires at least one more impulse to the upside to, to marry to it. Um, this could be a wave one, this could be a wave A of a zigzag, uh, and this could be a wave two or a wave B to the downside. Um, my expectation is that uh, whether this is an A or a B or a one or a two, we still need at least one more impulse to the upside. And so that's why I lean towards this particular count, which suggests we have a wave one, uh, wave two, and we'll soon, possibly next week, start to see a wave three, four, and five to the upside for either wave C or a wave three to the upside, possibly. Um, that's still in the cards. Uh, whatever the, uh, however you want to count it, the, it's a very important uh, support right here is at 1823. We get a break below that, um, then this count is no good, and we could see a um, continued downtrend from there. 
Okay, so that concludes my coverage for the PM Complex for this week. I hope you all have a great weekend, and we'll be talking to you later. Adios.